we'll find that units can be very useful helping us check our answers. And let's look at a quick example. So we saw before that force has units of mass times length divided by time squared. And what we'll see later is, for example, the force of gravity is the mass of one object times the mass of another object times a constant called Newton's gravitational constant g divided by the distance between the two masses squared. So don't don't worry too much about where this this um, equation comes from. Um, but let's say we we're given this equation, so we know that this is this is the force of gravity. Well, if we look at the units of this, we see that the units are mass squared times the units of g divided by length squared. But again, we know that these units, because this is a force, must be the same as mass times length divided by time squared. So we can use this to find out what the units of g are. So if we take the first units we saw for force, and we divide that by the time squared, by time squared, now we take the units of gravity and solve, then we see that g, uh, if we cancel the mass term, we multiply the L squared by L, so that's going to be up on top. So we have an L cubed now, uh, and then we're still dividing by T squared, and we're also dividing by a mass. So mass times time squared. So the units of Newton's constant are length cubed divided by mass times squared. So we use this to take some quantity, some unknown quantity in an equation and figure out what it represents physically, or at least what, what type of, of object it is. But it's also useful to check our answers. For example, we know that energy has units mass times length squared divided by time squared. So let's say I'm actually working out an equation and I'm trying to calculate an energy. And I get something that looks like E is one half m squared v squared. Well, since I know the units of energy, so the units of this energy I calculated are mass squared, length squared, over time squared. So I know this is wrong because I have an extra squared term on the mass that I don't here. So I can go back in my problem and look at all the work that I did to get here and find out, you know, somewhere I have an extra mass term. And it's not you know, the mistake that I see a, a lot of people make when they're first learning physics is that they just say, oh, oh, I have a, a kilogram squared here. I just need to take off the square. But that's not what this is doing. This is actually telling you somewhere in your calculation, you made a mistake. And it's not just the kilogram squared here. There's probably something with the numbers that you're coming up with that are wrong. Um, you know, this even works in a case where if you're dealing with just, you know, if you actually have a numerical answer. So let's say you have a problem and you do a whole bunch of work and you get to the end and you see that your speed is equal to 13 meters per second squared. Well, as we saw already, this is wrong, right? Velocity should have been in meters per second. So then you can go back through your problem and back through your work and you can find out where you made your mistake that, that gave you the wrong units. 
So although it can be kind of a pain in the butt working out a calculation and carrying around these units all over the place, um, you'll find that they're actually going to save you because more often than not, if you're making a mistake in this class, you're probably um, doing something that's going to give you an answer with completely different units. And uh, and so that's why you know I want to you know stress that one of the most important things you can do in this class is to always 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 check your units when you get your answer. Okay, because you know as um, as I mentioned in lecture and as you can see on the syllabus, we're giving you know really no partial credit. You're either getting a question right or wrong. You know with the exception of some small mathematical errors, you'll still get credit for your problem. But if you have an answer where the units don't match, you will absolutely not receive any credit for that problem um, because that, that unit mistake is telling you a lot about what you're doing wrong mathematically. Um, and, you know, just kind of like another little tip for those of you taking, you know, exams like the MCAT or taking like the, the physics GRE some, or something, there's actually uh, problems on the exam where only one answer has the correct units. So if you, if sometimes if you quickly look at the, the answers before you solve the problem, you'll notice that they, you know, quickly notice that they all have different units and all you need to do is pick the answer that has the right units and you don't have to do any of the actual physics, which sometimes can be very difficult for that problem uh, to get the answer. And, you know, on a timed exam like that, that can be really useful. So units really are, um, once you get used to them, and once you um, you know, use them quite often. They can, you know, really kind of be your best friends.